Welcome to episode number six of the Common Questions video series. My name is Jonathan Cheka, and today the question that we're asking is, is Jesus the only way to heaven? More to come here in a second. first view that we're going to be looking at actually kind of subverts the question that we're asking. Uh, the more atheistic view on this question would be that there is no way to heaven because that there is no heaven. This is uh, born out of the presupposition that there is nothing beyond the material and that when you die, that's just kind of it. But that's a very new kind of view. Very few people throughout history have held to that, and it's again, born out of more of a materialist presupposition that there can't be anything because this, this physical world, is all that there is. Now, among those that would say that there actually is a heaven that we can go to, the first view that we're going to look at is called pluralism. This is basically saying that there is no one singular way to heaven. Every religion on earth just kind of leads into the same place, that there's uh, one wheel and many spokes leading into that wheel. But this view is really difficult to arrive at from a Christian perspective. It's mostly born out of a philosophical and uh, liberal theological bent that, well, surely something good has to happen to all of these people. There can't just be one exclusive way can there? Too many, too many, too many, too many. So there's not really a lot of biblical or really any biblical evidence that would lead a Christian to believe that pluralism, that all religions just lead to the same place. There's not really much of a basis for that within Christianity. If you start with the presupposition that, well, everyone who's good has to go somewhere that's good, then that becomes a little bit more viable of an option. But again, from a Christian biblical perspective, not a whole lot of evidence to it. The second view that we're going to look at does come out of a outgrowth of a Christian perspective, but maybe not one that's extremely biblical. It's called inclusivism, which is that, sure, all religions aren't equal. Some of them are better than others, but the ones that are better are potentially salvific for the people who adhere to it insofar as that religion reflects who the person of Jesus is and what he taught. So you might have religion A over here that is not quite optimal, but still has some truth in it. And an inclusivist would say that someone who adheres to that religion sincerely and really does strive to uphold the good parts of that religion, that that person could still be saved. They could still end up in heaven, whereas there are some other religions that really just don't reflect who Jesus is and therefore can't be salvific. But the problem with inclusivism is that it kind of removes Jesus from being Jesus. It uh, neglects or overlooks the parts where Jesus would say that he in person and in his name is the only possible way to salvation, that he is the way, the truth, and the light, not the pinnacle of many different truths. Jesus. What's up? Lord? Why am I here? Uh, Ned Flanders, you have been a sinner, but you have taken the first step on the road to redemption, and if you accept the word of the Lord, at me, I shall return you to earth to carry forth my word of hope, and, uh, like that. He is the exclusive truth. So that's a little bit of the problem with inclusivism. The last view that we're going to look at is called particularism, and I would say that this is the most biblical view, the view that reflects what God has said through the Bible the best, which is that people need to hear and respond specifically to the gospel of Jesus, that he is God and came and died and resurrected so that we could have eternal life. So while this is the most biblical view, it seems a little bit exclusivistic, and it is. It says that there are certain people who will not respond to the gospel of Jesus positively and therefore will not not enter into eternal life. So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Whatever. Well, out of a desire to try to include more people in that, that's where inclusivism and pluralism really developed out of, is a way to try to justify how people who haven't heard the gospel of Jesus could still potentially be saved. But the Bible isn't particularly clear about what happens to the people who haven't had the opportunity to hear the gospel. What it does put the emphasis on is that we are supposed to go out and tell the gospel to people who haven't had the opportunity to hear it yet in the hopes that they will respond positively to it, put their faith in Jesus, and be saved. That's the goal, anyway. 
whether we like this answer or not, it is what seems to be the most biblical view, and if that's what God has laid out for us, that's what we're bound to. I hope this episode helped clear up for you a little bit about what the path to heaven is. Is Jesus the only way? So if you want to find out more, you can listen to the podcast that we've linked in the description below. And if you haven't gotten an opportunity yet, go ahead and like this video, leave any thoughts that you have in the comments below, and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you never miss a new video.